All right. Hey, everyone. Happy Monday. It is October 23, at least in California. And uh, we've got a few items on the agenda to go through. But as you'd expect, this is very, very hyper focused on the GA release, which is hopefully a week and a few days away. Uh, so, yeah, uh, slowly but surely, we're making it through. Uh, thank you to everyone. This has been a huge team effort. I uh, you know, it's been basically four years since we got to that point. I've been pulling out some old uh, uh, old slides from back in the day uh, where actually Bowie proposed the idea of what was going to be Ingress V2. A few people on this call were at that, you know, at that KubeCon. Uh, it's first time I met Nick, first time I met uh, Damien, a uh, few others. Uh, little did we know uh, that... Uh, yeah, we'd still be here four years later. Um, but yeah, anyway, uh, with that said, uh, yeah, thanks to everyone. Uh, we're going to do everything we can to uh, and include and give credit to everyone who's uh, who's uh, contributed here. I, some of you may have seen in Slack, before I forget, a call out that one of Nick and I have a talk where we're trying to present, you know, Gateway APIs, the most collaborative uh, API in Kubernetes history. Uh, and we're trying to show, you know, basically uh, avatars of people that have contributed to Gateway API. Uh, we're just gonna steal your GitHub profile picture if you have one, uh, but if you don't have one, uh, or if you want a different one to be used, please ping us with a, you know, whatever you would like. Uh, or if you just don't wanna be mentioned, that's fine too, but just let us know. But by default, we're just using whatever's on GitHub. Um, yeah. Uh, so with that said, uh, GA release is on schedule, I think. Uh, right now we're looking at a uh, ingress to gateway. This is all related, but ingress to gateway 0.1 is on schedule to go out tomorrow. Uh, there's a corresponding blog post that will also go out tomorrow. And the blog post is more than just about ingress to gateway 0.1. It's also just a mention of, hey, this is probably a good time to switch from the Ingress API, API over to Gateway API. Uh, Gateway's about to go GA, et cetera. Uh, reviews are welcome on any and all of these uh, that are going to be linked. Uh, then we're hoping to get RC2 out for Gateway API on Wednesday. Uh, we did get approval from Cal. Uh, we got uh, high-level approval from Tim as well uh, to move forward with this release. And so we are unblocked on that perspective and the, the primary blockers are ourselves and our time. Uh, but uh, we, we I, I think we're gonna make it. Uh, and then finally a 1.0 release, we're looking at uh, Tuesday of next week. Uh, so I make it a spooky release, I guess. Uh, it, any of these days may sli slip, you know, one day or something, but we're trying to leave room for that in the schedule. and. Uh, yeah, that's that's all for that. Uh, we have three OSS blog posts planned, one for Ingress to Gateway, one for Gateway GA, and one for experimental features. Uh, so the experimental features is the is the earliest stage. This one is is basically ready. It's going tomorrow. If you have any comments, please, you know, add them ASAP. Um, but this is basically good to go, in my opinion. The next two are much earlier on. Uh, I think they're probably too early for feedback. Nick, I don't know if you have thoughts on the Gateway Geo one, but I think that that one's too early for feedback. As yeah, it's well. probably a bit early for feedback. I'm going to have a pass over today, um, but yeah. Okay. But I'll put yeah. something in the chat. I think it's ready for uh, for general feedback. Cool. And uh, the Gateway 1.0 experimental features, we are uh, trying to highlight all of the experimental features getting into 1.0, and uh, we'll have authors representing each of the gaps uh, for that blog post. Uh, so yeah, thanks to everyone who's yeah who's helped us get here. Um, KubeCon is coming around the corner. Could, I know many that, people. Could you just crack that? Yeah. Could you just crack that experimental features one? Uh, yeah. Thank you. Uh, and just yeah. So thanks for opening this, John. But uh, these are the ones, the experimental features we want to cover. Yeah. Um, so backend TLS policy, timeouts, infrastructure labels, uh, the uh, backend protocol stuff, uh, and gateway kettle. Uh, so um, 
yeah, I think uh, everyone who has worked on those, uh, this is your chance to uh, to write some words uh, about about your gap. Uh, if you don't want to do that, that is hundred percent fine. Ping Rob Shane or I, uh, and we will uh, yeah write that before you. Um, but uh, yeah, the the idea here is we want uh, people who author the gaps to uh, you know get a chance to be an author on the blog post on the Kubernetes blog. Um, so yeah, um, we are, we'll leave it yeah, up to you. If you. Want us to help you write it? Then that's fine. But like, if we want you to get the author credit. Yeah, I've I've actually already reached out to everyone here, and uh, we that they're, they're good. So uh, fortunately, uh, everyone will be contributing uh, to this blog post, and I'm excited for that uh, collaborative blog blog post too. Uh, but yeah, um, keeping on theme. Okay, yeah, <laughs> we're working on it. Uh, okay, so next up, uh, KubeCon. I I know that. Uh, unfortunately, not everyone uh, that we'd love to will, will be able to make it, but uh, for whoever can, we want to see you. Uh, I've had a few different people reach out and say, I'd really like to talk about X new feature. I'd like to brainstorm about what, how we could do this or that. Uh, so it's really hard. We found out in previous KubeCons to find a time where everyone related to Gateway API can be in the same place at the same time. It's you know, especially with Contrib Summit now, uh, the way that it is, it is the same day as every co-located event. It seems like almost everyone that comes to KubeCon is going to a co-located event or, you know, bouncing in between. It's, it's hard to find a time for everyone. So the idea is we'll have maybe three different slots. Hopefully there's at least one that works for anyone who wants to be part of that. Uh, uh, but we'll just post those times in Slack and in this agenda and consider them kind of informal gateway brainstorming sessions. If you have a topic you want to discuss, you can add it to any one of those agendas. Uh, and this is not meant to be just maintainers by any, that this is open to absolutely everyone. It's just a place where we know at least the maintainers will be together and anyone else, please come join the brainstorming, whatever. Um, it may just be nothing but conversation about who knows what, but it's just an opportunity to talk. Um, yeah, so that's, yeah, at KubeCon. And then the other thing I really, really wanted to mention here is we're not like, as you'd expect, we're, we're on the cusp of 1.0. We're not merging any new features. We're not, we're not doing big changes. This is not the time for big changes. This is the time for docs, uh, for bug fixes. Please find and fix bugs or just find bugs. We'll fix them, whatever, just, you know, small things. Uh, and then doc some more. Uh, I think Dave has some conformance tests. Those are great too. But, you know, small changes are what we're looking for right now. Uh, with that said, I did want to call out a few of the PRs that are in progress. Uh, there's one for documenting route timeouts, one for backend TLS policy. I know there's one coming for backend protocol from Dave for documentation. And I also want to call out this PR from Danian, which is really exciting. We are getting documentation on Kubernetes IO finally. Thank you, Danian. Uh, this is nice. so great to see. Yeah, it's been overdue for forever. Uh, and yeah, big big shout out to Danian for getting this one out there. Um, and you know, uh, all of these need review, help, assistance, and it's very appreciated wherever you can spare cycles. Um, yeah. Okay, so that was a absolute whirlwind, but that's everything I have on the agenda, and I don't see anyone else having added anything. So if anyone has other topics, by all means, we can go through them. Um, but that's everything I had, uh, or Nick had it. Yeah, I don't. I don't really have much to add here, except to sort of echo what Rob said about, yeah, small changes only at the moment. Um, you know, there's a bunch of sort of gap related activity and stuff like that. Um, you know, all of that sort of stuff is paused until after we have should be considered paused until after we've done that. We won't be budging anything um, that's not bug fixes or docs or very small, uh, you know, performance checks, tests, that sort of thing, before we cut the uh, 1.0 release branch. Yeah, and thank you to uh, Serena. Hopefully I'm saying that name correctly. Uh, in chat, uh, you brought up a really good question. Uh, 
really great to have new contributors uh, on the call. And, uh, you know, we are always trying to find opportunities. Uh, one thing I wanted to call out is I, I talked with Garov this morning. He's been kind of owning and pushing Gateway Cuddle forward, and there's a lot of work there to be done. And one of his goals over the next two days or so is to split those, that work out into smaller issues that more people can take on and, and work towards. And so I'd keep an eye out for that. Uh, if you don't see anything in the next couple of days, uh, please ping me or Garov on Slack. Uh, it's definitely the goal to have some opportunities to, to work on, on that tool. It's There's a lot of room for growth there. Um, yeah, so, so I would say that's one of the best opportunities to to get started with uh, with Gateway Cuddle, well, with Gateway API as a whole. Uh, but I would also just mention that, uh, you know, we are desperately in need of help with docs reviews and just docs in general, yeah, especially for new contributors. If you are new to the API and you see something that doesn't make sense, uh, if you can make an issue, uh, that's incredibly helpful to us. I am very aware that we have confusing parts of our docs, but I've lost track of where they are. So just, you know, noting that this there's a topic here that doesn't make sense, or we have a typo or whatever it is. Uh, if it's something like you think you can fix, that's also great. But docs are such a huge part of what we do. Uh, and yeah, I uh, would really appreciate any and all help there. And thank you, Candice, for, for linking that agenda as well. I'm pretty um, sure that... We have confusing docs everywhere, actually. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's uh, my my first contribution to Kubernetes was my first two or three contributions to Kubernetes was docs. Uh, and it was a really good learning process for me. And so I always try and encourage uh, that as a great starting point. Uh, yeah, 100%. Uh, yeah, I think that uh, one of my uh, to-dos for post-GA, once we actually have this thing and post-KubeCon, is for us to spend a little bit more time and uh, you're know, grooming good first issues and help wanted um, so that you know, new contributors have a, a reasonable pool of stuff that they can have a look at. Um, <clears throat> yeah, uh, and a lot of that stuff is going to be docs because that's way easier to get started with. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I'm hopeful that there should be some smaller features things or conformance test things that, are, that we can mark as good first issue or help wanted. Yeah, and with docs oh, being confusing, I, I, I could see that they may get a little more confusing for the short to midterm with docs now also living in, in the Kubernetes repo. Um, and so it just yeah, kind of makes how's me think. How's that going to work exactly? Is that, is that like two copies of docs or are the, the Kubernetes.io version getting pulled from this repo or what's the plan there? Sorry to put you. Yeah, on that's kind of what I'm what I'm getting at with <laughs> with this point is we're kind of going through. It seems like a, you know like a transition of standing up docs on Kubernetes uh, documentation repository, uh, and so that's really kind of the question for us to discuss is like should we have a tracker issue out there that says you know let's let's kind of freeze documentation in um, in the SIGs. Uh, uh, docs and, and really focus our efforts on Kubernetes docs. Um, so it's kind of really the question for us to kind of figure out. And I'm not sure we figure it out here. And, and maybe if we just have a tracker issue created and come to a vote, or I don't know. Yeah. yeah no. I so my my thought here is, uh, and and I'm just looking at the deploy preview of what you've already done, Danny. And so thank you for that. Uh, but what I what I really want to see here is what you've already done of when people are browsing Kubernetes docs, they're going to see service and ingress and what do you know, gateway uh, there as well. Uh, so it, it will help improve discoverability. Right now, we're basically relying on people having read Kubernetes blog, gone to KubeCon, et cetera. But it's, if, you're not, if you're not paying attention, it's easy to miss that there's this thing called gateway out there. Uh, there were some small references from service docs before but they were pretty tiny. My goal, you know, my goal here is to keep the documentation on Kubernetes IO pretty limited and something that, and content that's not going to go stale. Uh, basically like high level, here's the scope of gateway. 
uh, here's, you know, links for how you can get started. Here's, you know, like high level resource uh, structure, et cetera, without, you know, without getting into anything that's likely to go stale in the next year even, you know, so GA resources, et cetera, um, which is, I think, close, basically what you've done. I, I've only skimmed through what you, what you have so far, Damien. So let me know if I'm off base on any of that. Um, yeah, I think but, so. I try to find that balance of like, hey, let's not, you know, like recreate the wheel here, but take, essentially take the, uh, the gateway API documentation and boil it down to kind of like a one pager, right? Where yeah. it really hits, why do you want to use this? High level concepts, the pr three primary resources, uh, request flow. Um, and, and one thing that I added when we get to, if you want to click on getting started, I thought like with getting started, right? Uh, you can kind of click in the right hand pane over there, getting started. Thank you. Um, and I just used Envoy Gateway as an example, just because obviously I know the project a little bit, but um, you know, without actually like referencing any of the particular implementations, this getting started is pretty basic, right? It's like, hey, you can install these CRDs, but don't really do that because most of the implementations do that for you, right? So we could do one of two things. We, you know, we have a getting started that says, hey, if you want to get started, go to the, you know, the gateway API documentation and follow the implementations there. Or we can kind of take this approach because I kind of got this from the services document where you have like each uh, uh, load balancer uh, service, uh, each implementation has their own set of annotations to use. I'm like, oh, what if we did something like that for um, gateway API implementations where it's like each implementation can kind of have a tab there that just says, hey, here's how you kind of install the implementation, install the CRDs, and then for further information, click here for the full suite of documentation. So I was just trying to think of like which direction do we go there, um, and you know, it's uh, you know each direction kind of has its pros and cons. But one of the pros I thought is like this could almost incentivize implementations to be conformant because I would think we could go ahead and say, hey, in order to be on here, you have to have you know your your implementation has to be conformant, right? Um, and and I could see this from a vendor standpoint of actually being Kind of like an incentivized to to go through and, and be conformant, uh, but I don't know. Yeah, no, th this is uh, this is really cool. Uh, we have done everything we can to uh, avoid wading into these uh, potentially controversial waters of of featuring, <laughs> you know, many over others, uh, mm -hmm. and you know, kind of. I, you know, one one of the good problems to have with gateway APIs, we already have seven or eight conformant implementations of the API. So even if, you know, if we said every conformant implementation could fit and we expect that, we hope and expect that list to grow, it would be very difficult to, I think, maintain that many different options. Yep. Um, yeah. But I am very interested in providing more and more incentives for implementations to become conformant because I think that is... Uh, a very key part of the entire, uh, you know, value proposition of Gateway API that were truly portable across implementations. Um, I think Daniel's other point there that the getting started section for Gateway as an ingress, con you know, an ingress problem solver really is challenging to write about if we're not going to talk about an implementation of it because you're really not supposed to go and install the CRDs by hand and then go goof around. And this was a fairly confusing thing the first time I tried to do this as an end user. So um, yeah, I honestly do not know how to balance that. I don't particularly want to see 20 tabs there, um, but it's a, it's a fascinating and difficult problem. <laughs> um, yeah. 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 It's, I think that the, um uh i think that the problem the problem here is that a lot of this is going to be in flux for some time to come like the api itself mm -hmm. is ga but conformance exactly how we report the conformance um you know all that sort of stuff is going to be in flux for a little while um you know which implementations are conformant probably won't change too much but you know exactly how you report the conformance how you can see uh like the conformance reports in like more consumable way than the current sort of you know, YAML files in the repo, 
or Mar- yeah, YAML files in the repo is sort of needs a bit of work. I, I would like to see us have like a page, a uh, matrix comparison style page eventually that parses the conformance reports and has that sort of thing. <laughs> um, and uh yeah, uh, Dave says they require a notar- we require a notarized letter to be posted to my house. That would certainly ensure that people are serious, given that you have to figure out uh, you know, how to post a letter to Australia. Um, but um, more seriously, I think oh come like- on, that's not that hard. We all have access to carrier pigeons these days. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Um, but yeah, I think, and I think you, I, I think that it feels to me likely that. What we need to do to have a getting for for a getting started thing is to say is to very clearly say installing the gateway CIDs by themselves does nothing. You must install an implementation. There is actually, if you look at the down in the sidebar, you've got ingress and ingress controllers. Like we might need to have that sort of distinction, or at least a call out in the getting started page to say, hey, to get started with this, you can install the CIDs where they won't do anything without an implementation. You need to choose an implementation and then go go to this page and sort of you know, follow the installer gateway controller, um, installer gateway controller uh, guide and pick a, pick a, um, you know, yeah, pick a thing there. Um, so I think the, I think probably we should err on the side of, you know, clarity, but without putting too much detail in just yet, because I suspect that what we need to put in there is going to change pretty substantially in the next like six months or so. Um, so that's, I think that's probably the best in my mind reason to just, keep it pretty simple. And so as long as we say, and I think it was a really good call out, Flynn, as long as we make it very clear that installing the CIDs does nothing and you must install an implementation as well, just like with Ingress, you know, that, um, you know, the, um, uh, yeah, that, 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 um, yeah, that will probably be the most sort of sustainable thing going forward. I mean, you know, this is a, you know, once this is on the website, it's not that hard to update, but like, I think that, you know, substantially changing it is going to be you know, tricky for many reasons. So I think better to start with a minimal viable docs and, uh, you know, and sort of expand them out is my feeling. Okay. Yeah, and that's where I started. Uh, Rob, do you mind jumping back to that preview page uh, and the getting started section there? Um, because uh, could... that's, that's kind of where I started here. If you just read that paragraph and then as I was, you know, reviewed and reviewed and uh, probably looking at it too much, I'm like, gosh, it's just, this doesn't really feel like a getting started, right? We're basically saying, uh, okay, you get started, install these things, but wait, don't really install them because use an implementation. But I still, you know, I, I get the point of, hey, maybe that's just all we do is we say, hey, you know, you can install these on your own, but really select one of these implementations that you use or clicks on that implementations hyperlink and then follows the, the, the documentation for a particular implementation. Um, and maybe down the road, we, we, do some kind of tab thing here that gets into more details, but um, you know, I, I, I definitely understand the, the reason to keep this simple. Um, so. Yeah, yeah. I need to, I need to take another look at this and, and think about it more. I, I mean, I'm agreeing with what everyone's saying here. I mean, it, it's it's a pretty rough getting started process if if you can't show a more concrete example. But then at the same time, if we show a concrete example, you basically have to pick a winner or a set of winners, and that's also not a, a good solution. I actually um, kind of like the idea of pointing out you need to install the gateway API, you know, you need to install an implementation. And oh, by the way, you can go to this other page that has links to the getting started pages for a bunch of implementations. That would kind of require that we ask implementations to write a getting started page. But that seems <laughs> like a pretty small ask because that yep. seems like something they really ought to be doing anyway. And I realize yep. that sounds very facetious, but I mean that actually very seriously in this case, implementations really should have a getting started page and a way to talk about how to yeah. get started with them. You know? Yeah. That's, uh, yeah, that's a, that's a really good idea actually. And that can be something like we, we link, we explicitly add links to every implementation that has a getting started page as in, yeah. in our and If you don't have a getting started page, well, you know, sorry, add a getting started page and we'll link to you. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, be conformant, be conformant and have a getting started page. Um, yeah, and that seems I, like a pretty low bar for uh, for I would an hope, ask. Yeah. yeah, I would really hope that's a low bar. Um, before I vanish, Serena had a question about gateway control 
gateway control, <laughs> not cuddle control. Um, <laughs> the Go packages are in the gateway API repo, but where does the C CLI actually live? It lives nowhere at the moment. You need to build it yourself. But do you build it from Gateway API or do you yes, build it from yes, you, build okay. it, you build it from the from this repo? We have specifically oh, I see it there. Not, yeah, look at that. Yeah. We have specifically not uh provided any binaries as yet because we want to wait for it to be a bit more solid before we do that. Yeah. 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 So it's just... it's technically included in 1.0, but it, there's no there's no release artifacts associated with it. It's just if you want to try it, you can build it yourself, but it's still pretty experimental. The reason it's even in here is that we think as new features are added, we want to tie gateway cuddle support to new feature. You know, like we want to have those released at the same time. So we thought it made sense to have it here, but it's not stable enough to have a release artifact yet, in my opinion. Cool. What do... You know what? I should phrase this as a meta question. Is it possible to answer the question of what is missing for it to be stable enough to have a release artifact in 60 seconds? Or is that just a much longer discussion that we should have later? I'm not really sure. I think I think we could benefit from more tests, more usage. And okay. uh, Garov is working on a, a kind of roadmap for this, this tool and where we want to see it go. Uh, one example of of kind of a, a rough edge right now is you can use there's gateway cuddle describe that allows you to describe any gateway resource, but it really just focuses on policy. And so for anybody yeah. using this for the first time, they're probably going to want to see everything about a resource, not just the policy bits. Um, and that's yeah. certainly something like we can do. It's just not done yet. Uh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah well, I that think makes a lot of sense. Yeah, and I think um, the you know, as it says, as you can see in that thing, you know, the aim is to make it available as a standalone binary, a QCuddle plugin, and a library. So mm -hmm. we need to sort of define all of those things, make them actually available. You know, like just there's a bunch of sort of uh, grindy work there to do to sort of just just get yep. us to a minimal minimum sort of viable product. I I think that yeah, the more that we can get it to a minimum viable product and have like a relatively easy way to install it and a bunch of other stuff like that, the better off we will be. But the you know without without that sort of without you know automated builds and you know all that sort of stuff then like oh yeah the, yeah yeah right like yeah all that sort of stuff uh, is the sort of things that uh, I think we need uh, before we can sort of call this even experimental. Yeah. So um, more functionality, lots of grindy work. Got it. Yep. Basically. Yep. Cool. And on that note. Thanks much. I got to bail and uh, great. I will catch y'all on the earlier time slot next time. Yep. Cool. All right. Well, I think that's everything on the agenda. So if there, well, let me oh, give it more. another 30 I seconds. I added uh, one more triage. Oh, good call. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so reviewing uh one of my prs and i guess he's running it with v1 so there is just something missing in um when we introduce the v1 apis like adding it to some scale. oh yeah thank you yes i yeah, think that's it was because guy. i had to like use the v1 beta apis against existing limitations so yeah yep yeah. Yep. Uh, right, yeah that that is a very good call thank you for adding that uh one thing i would note just my recommendation, just so you can support a broader set of CRDs, would be to continue to read and write from v v1 beta one, uh, because that will continue to work with v1 CRDs. Like if if you were conformant with the API at 080, your implementation should continue to run fine with these new CRDs. Um, so I would do that. But yes, at some point we'll recommend up, up updating to v1. Um, but Yes, this is this is a great fix. Thanks for the the heads up. Yeah, I think uh, for Cilium, we probably are going to update to V one pretty soon after um, the thing to just to test everything out and make sure everything's working. Um, but yeah, thanks. I really appreciate that. Dave. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Thanks, Sanjay, for testing it. <laughs> yeah, those to everybody who uh, who has 
uh, found bugs in RC1. Thank you. And for the people that do the thankless work of, of actually testing out our, you know, these releases, it's it's so invaluable. So so thank you uh, to, to Sanjay for the find and Dave for the fix here. It's great. All right. I think that may be everything. Um, thank you, everyone. Uh, talk to you next week hopefully we have rc2 out at least by then and uh next week is the early time over. right uh that's a good question let's check shane is the one who who owns that invitation so we're gonna have to re rely on shane he's uh out right now we'll get back to you on slack uh because we we have this kind of like i think we've said either first tuesday of the month uh or something like that uh, oh, so it's early time slot, but Tuesday at least you know is first, last. But also first. But if you say first month, week of the comment. month, yeah, comment, yeah, so. I, I don't know, I don't know. Yeah, um, yeah. So, so, so by the by the initial schedule, uh, it should not be. We do have. There is a. I have a meeting for next week. I don't know if it's the correct one because of previous. Um. Anyway, so yeah. Um yeah, I'll rely exclusively on Shane for uh determining when yes. our correct meeting time is uh on that I one. guess we should probably mention though that uh you know, just in case it was not clear, like there will be no meeting for the week of KubeCon. Yeah. Yeah. Because you know most of us will be at KubeCon. Yeah. Um and oh man, if there's a theme song, I would love to hear it. Uh can can do it do the intro at uh, at KubeCon. Um, anyway, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, uh, thank you, everyone. This has been great. Um, and uh, talk to you all next week. Excellent. Great. Catch you, Mike.